conceptual Jay sounded better than Jay Prince. People talk Real about talk, it. I ain't throwing shots. All of the elements. Good morning to some, uh, good afternoon to others, depending on where you are in the world uh, today. Uh, this is normally not when I would do a live on Facebook, but this is going to end up on a lot of different platforms. I just chose Facebook as the place that I would do the live. Uh, I'm not sure how many people will actually tap, tap in because I'm pretty sure people at work, people in the midst and the uh, throes of their day, fine. Uh, at some point, you're going to watch this if it's meant for you to see and hear. And so I want to encourage you first and foremost to understand that where you are today is not where you will end up. And how you choose to move each and every moment of your life is going to determine the ultimate outcome of your destiny. Whether you start in the pits and throes of poverty or you start at the peak of privilege, how you end up will be you. It won't be where you started. It won't be with what you started with. It will be with what you did with what you started with. And so I want to talk to you about that. But before I do, I want to invite you guys to uh, participate in the 30-day challenge. The 30-day challenge is actually something. The 30-day Your Best Life Challenge is actually something I started at the beginning of the year. It was in an effort to do something that I have struggled uh, to do for probably seven or eight years and that's find a way for me to work with people who may not be able to afford my normal packages and to make it affordable you know make it to where okay you're putting something into yourself but it's something that if a person really wanted to do it they could find a way to make it happen and it not hurt them you know what I'm saying is that was the goal I want to work with people I want to touch the lives of people not just people who can afford my packages but people period so you have to find ways to do that and you also have to understand that in the process of finding a way to do that you've got to also eat feed your family sustain and build what you're trying to build there's this balance that's constantly going on and I, so I started this thing just as a way to put me in front of people who have been looking up and saying sending me emails and contacting me and said hey man as soon as I am making able to I'm going to work with you as soon as I may I get that so often so I said let me close the gap let me bridge the gap let's see what happens and the response was actually phenomenal and the goal was just to have people uh, access to people and give them access to me for 30 days and to see what that looked like to see just how much you could get done in 30 days oh my god I ended up with long-term clients out of the deal which is awesome but even the people who, after it was over, just wanted to walk away, I still hear back from them talking about, man, I'm still doing this, Doc. This thing you told me to do right here has totally changed the game for me. This one thing that I changed about my life has now changed the whole entire course of my life. That's how powerful habits are. When you can change one habit, you can literally change the tra trajectory of your life. And so that was my goal. And so I decided, you know what, I, I'm, I said I was going to make it a one-time thing that once you did it, you couldn't do it anymore because it was so inexpensive that it wasn't really a money maker for me as much as it was an opportunity to work with people so I wanted to give people an opportunity to see what it was like and then if they wanted to they could take it to the next level and some did but then I was sitting up thinking man I want everybody to close out this year which has been crazy I want them to close it out on a positive note and a powerful note that there are things understanding that there are things in your life that you just absolutely have no control over that is not what's going to determine where you come out at. Most people give too much attention to what they don't control. Most people give too much attention to the things they have no influence on, and they lose sight of where their power lies in the things they do control. How you respond to something is something you control. How you take what you have and build from the ground up is something you control. What you have in your hand is something you control. What you don't have in your hand is not what you control. Stop worrying about what you don't have and focus on what you do. It's amazing what you can do with that. Sometimes it's just going to be lean. 
You're going to have lean years. I don't care how successful you become, you're going to have lean years. So in doing that, I have just been excited. So what I did is I brought it back. I want to close it out. So I didn't put everything I normally put in my description box of this video because I want you to focus. I want people to see the opportunity to work with me in a one-on-one -on -one capacity at an unbelievable opportunity that anybody can do if they're seriously committed to doing it. I want to invite you into my world to see what it's like to work with me, what my clients experience, and I'm pretty sure some of them are going to jump in here uh, and weigh in at some point. I want you to truly, truly, truly see what it's like. And I want you to understand that life isn't about what, what happened to you. Life isn't about where you come from. Life isn't about all the things that went wrong. Life is about what you did with it, how you responded to it. What did you do when life came at you? Because life is going to come at you. Life is going to come at you in so many different ways, shapes, forms, and, 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 and situations that you really truly need to understand how to respond. And so that's what I want to do. I'm going to talk to you about why I'm here now, but I had to bring that to you. Welcome to the 30 day, your best life challenge. Become your best self starting one step at a time. I don't care where you're at right now. There's a better you out there waiting to manifest itself. If you're willing to invest in yourself, if you're willing to give the world a piece of you in a way that you've never done before, sitting back, waiting on opportunities is not how it's going to happen. Waiting on the perfect opportunity is not how it's going to happen. Waiting on somebody to discover you is not how it's going to happen. You're going to have to stand up. You're going to have to go out there. You're going to, have to take your bumps and bruises, but you're going to have to be committed enough to put push through to the other side of fear, the other side of pain, the other side of disappointment, the other side of frustration until you land your feet on solid ground and you keep running and you move forward. And yes, there are going to be ups and downs, ins and outs. I have been on every spectrum there is, uh, that you can possibly hit in the areas of success. And I've, I've come full circle. I've had to rebuild from absolutely nothing twice. And I'm still breathing. And every day I see something different about myself. My goal is, and I'm going to share this with you a little bit in, in, into what I'm going to do, which isn't going to be long. But my, my goal is to leave this world without regret. My, my goal is to leave this world and not have to say, I wish I could have done more. That's my goal, is to leave this world on empty. That's my challenge to you. So I want to talk to you about the mindset of a winner. Is why I'm here. I'm going to talk to you about the mindset of a winner. First of all, what you consider to be a winner is going to be different than the next person. What you consider to be success is going to be different than the next person. I've tried to, over the course of my life, my career um, as an entrepreneur, as a business person, uh, as an athlete, in, 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 in any other area, as a husband, as a father, is I've tried to create a clear cut uh, definition of what success was for me. And as growing, growing up as a child, my grandmother uh, would bring these LPs. If you don't know what an LP is, it means I'm aging myself. But an LP is an album. It, you put it on a record player or what they call the Victroller, and you put the little needle on it. It's like what you would see DJs still use. Some, 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 some pure DJs still use them. And you put it on and you play it, and it plays. Uh, my grandma used to bring LPs of Earl Nightingale home. He is the father of public speaking, the father of motivational speaking. He is that dude. Had this deep voice, real smooth talking, you know, whatever. And so I would listen to these LPs of Earl Nightingale. I'm talking about five, six years old. And just, you know, I, I, I became like, I didn't know who he was. Uh, it wasn't a term motivational speaker at the time. It was just what it was. And following him came Bob Proctor and... Zig Ziglar and Jim Rohn and all these other people. And then later on down the line came Tony Robbins and a bunch of other people. But Earl Nightingale was that dude. And Earl Nightingale would define success, uh, and I'm paraphrasing, as something that you achieve when you make consistent progress towards a worthy goal. So it's going to be different for everybody else. Some people won't feel successful. Uh, 
um, some some people are going not to not feel successful till they hit a, a million dollars. Some people will be okay with uh, a, a, a consistent income of six figures. Some people are going to need X, Y, Z. Some people are going to need to be married twenty years before they feel successful about their relationships. And and that, I would say, but there has to be a worthy goal, something that you deem worthy. And then you make consistent progress. And this is the part I love about it. Most people consider success based off of benchmarks. So they set 90-day goals, six-month goals, a year goal, two-year goals. And the problem is they don't celebrate until they hit that 90-day 90, 90 goal, whether they hit it on time or they hit it late. They don't celebrate. So if you hit all of your goals, if you hit all of your goals, wife has hit me with stuff that I've got to respond to. If you hit all of your goals, then that's still just four times a year, 96, three times a year, 96 in a year, 90 days, six months in a year. You're celebrating. The truth is, in order to get to those goals every day, you're making some type of progress. If you're not, you got to find it. And that's my goal. My goal every day is to make progress. Now, sometimes I can make progress in my finances. Sometimes things are just tight. This is a tight time financially. A lot of people are finding it difficult. Some people are actually thriving in it. It doesn't mean that you're not successful on either side. It means that you've got to find the place where you're building your momentum. And it might not be in the financial arena initially. But the one place that I found that I could always find progress, meaning I can always see myself as successful, is that I was evolving as a person. I was learning something new every day. There's so much power and energy in um, the evolution of oneself, in true enlightenment, and true learning, and true knowledge. And so that's where I would really commit myself. Every day, I'm engaging something that I don't know. You know, one of the, the challenges that people face is this pull to be the smartest person in the room, this pull to be the most accomplished and expert in the room. And what happens is you get comfortable in the room and that you dominate and you never learn. And so I am sitting there and I am looking and saying, you've got to come out of it. You've got to learn. You've got to be something beyond now you've got to get out of what you know to get into what you don't know because that's where you grow you grow by engaging things outside of your comfort zone and so that's my thing you're always learning so that's success so you find out how to be success here's the thing once you become committed to being the best you can possibly be in a particular era area this is how you're going to make your presence felt in the world. Find who you are and find what you're capable of bringing to the world. Because you don't become better by sucking out of the world. You become better by what you bring to the world. Yes, you deserve to be paid uh, for your level of expertise. You'll find ways when you need to to give it and to bless others who don't have. But there's nothing wrong with asking to be paid for what you're gifted in if what you're giving exceeds the value of what you're asking. There's absolutely nothing wrong with that. People will guilt you into trying to get you to do stuff for free when what you're bringing to the table is so valuable that they should beg to pay you for it, but they won't. You've got to find your value so you know who you are and you know, okay, this is when I need to be giving it away. And this is when I need to be paid for it and create that balance of blessing the world. But even when you're getting paid, if you're bringing more value than what you are asking for in compensation, you're still blessing the world. Don't let that confuse you. But this is what you've got to do. You have to find a way to make the world your library. See, we have learned to duck and hide and reduce ourselves and shrink ourselves and hide from challenges of life. In other words, once you decide what you're going to be, once you decide what you're going to commit yourself to, you got to make the world your library. Everything you need to know, everything you need to learn, all the things that aren't current currently present that you are going to need to reach critical mass and critical mass is just that point where everything you need in order to accomplish what you want to accomplish is present. In order to get there, you've got to turn the world into your library. It doesn't have to be done in a formal classroom. 
It may be done in a mentorship, an apprenticeship. It may be done by observing somebody at a distance, but it got it has to be done. You have to turn the world into your library. You have to study life from the perspective of what you plan on doing in it. You've got to be committed to it at a level that most people are committed. I tell people all the time, if you want something more than what you're seeing everybody else have, you've got to be willing to do more than everybody else is doing. You can't do what the masses are doing and expect more than the masses are getting that's ridiculous it's foolish and it's time consuming and it's energy wasting you have got to find a place in life where you are committed enough to go out and go above and beyond what the average person is doing that's where phenomenal lies that's where extraordinary lies that's where exceptional lies beyond what the average person is doing You've got to turn the world into your library and become committed into reading every book in that library that marches you towards your destiny. Second of all, you got to learn how to respond when you're in the cage. So that's the problem. Most of us live life in, in, in fear of getting inside of the cage because in the cage, there's a different set of rules in the cage. There's nobody backing down in the cage. There's nobody giving way to you because of who you are, what you know. In the cage, you got to bring your A game or be devoured. But you got to learn how to respond in the cage because in the cage is where winners are built. In the cage is where, 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 in, where intestinal fortitude is fortified. In the cage is where courage is is established and developed. It's in the cage where you got to see most people don't want to even get in the cage. And then when people find themselves in the cage because they ran until they actually ran into the back door of the cage, they don't know how to respond because they spent all their lives hovering around inside inside their comfort zone that when they step in the cage, which is nothing, which resembles nothing of comfort, they don't know how to respond. But see, that's what greatness is built. Greatness is built on the inside of the cage. You got to learn how to respond when you're inside of the cage. Next, you got to get over yourself. Well, what do you mean, Doc? What do you mean by get over yourself? See, here's what I can tell you. When you get out of your comfort zone, and you go into this next room where you're no longer the smartest and the best and the fastest and the strongest and, 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 and all of these other things that you've become comfortable in being in that room. When you move into the next room, you're at the bottom, right? Everybody in there knows a little bit more than you because you're the newest person in the room. You got to get over yourself. Why? Because you're going to make mistakes and you can't be worried about what somebody thinks about the mistake you made. You can't be worried about how you're being perceived because there's a question you ask that reveals that you don't know everything. Stop trying to be right all the time. Stop trying to be the smartest person all the time and learn how to let the humility of not knowing develop you into the expert you are designed to become. A place where if people want to know it they have to come to you but it doesn't start with you being the baddest person in the room it starts with you getting over yourself enough to be the lowest person in the room to be the person who knows the least in the room if you're not consistently walking in the rooms in which you don't know what everybody else knows you're not growing oh this one this next one is at the top of my list Almost every video that's about motivation, inspiration, and personal growth, I end by saying I'm going to live my life on full so that I die on E. And people sometimes get it. I got that actually first from Dr. Miles Monroe years ago. He said that the wealthiest place on the planet is the cemetery. So, and uh, I heard Les Brown share that as well. But it comes from Dr. Miles Monroe, somebody I've studied for decades. And he talks about the cemetery being the wealthiest place on the planet. And what he's saying is in the cemetery, you find books that were never written, businesses that were never started, inventions that were never brought forth, uh, relationships that were never developed, and on and on. It's so much untapped potential in the cemetery because people didn't act on their gift. And so I wake up every day and I realize that I have 86,400 seconds in a day. And what I do with them is going to determine how I walk away from this life. 
and I have made up in my mind that I will not leave this world having to wish I would have done more. I will have made some mistakes. I will have had some broken and failed relationships. I will have some moments that I wish I would have done things differently, but what I will not have is anything that says I didn't do as much as I possibly could, that I left some talent on the table, that I left some some, some potential uh, within myself that I did not actualize, activate and actualize and bring forth. I won't do it. I am not leaving this world sitting up thinking. I should have done more. That's the challenge that I'm bringing forth to you. Don't leave this world and go to your grave holding potential. Let your legacy speak for you in saying that you came, you saw, you conquered. No, you're not going to get through this without scratches. You're not going to get through it without bumps and bruises. You're not going to get through it without having to face down some fears and some pains and, and, and some frustrations. You're going to find out what delay looks like and you're going to have to make up in your mind that delay does not mean denial. You're going to have to come to a full circle of saying, I'm going to bring it all to the table. Every second has a purpose and I'm going to make every second matter. I don't care if it's a second that that's committed to a nap. That nap has a purpose. It's rejuvenating me. If it's time I'm sleeping, if it's time I'm spending with my wife and my family, it's because it's building something in me that makes me me better and allows me to touch lives. I am talking about giving your life meaning. Stop living your time casually in this world. I heard Les Brown said, those who live life casually become casualties. Then I heard E.T. talk about living life on full and dying on E and I'm like yeah that's it that's it right there I'm gonna die on E that's my challenge to you die on E hopefully you live a full life my goal is to live to a hundred in full being full of life I don't want to be under anybody's uh, care I want to be living in full whatever that gets me to whatever age that is that's where I want to live to but I want to leave this place having blessed it having known that it's different and better because I was in it. And, and that comes with the, the, the highs and the lows, the successes and the failures, and everything else in between. But can I look at people and they say, my life is better because this dude was here. Can I look around and say that people literally are saying, man, I was about to throw it all away and give it all up until this moment. Can I? That's what's going to matter. Not how much money I made, not how big my houses were, not how nice my cars were, not how much I could brag on a bank account, but how many lives did I touch? If you touch lives in the right way, the money will come. Sometimes it comes in bigger chunks than others, but you'll eat. But it don't make any sense to eat. And you can't look at what your work has produced in the lives of other people. Finally, there must be a culture within you that is cultivated, a culture of obsessiveness. That's something that's frowned upon in this world. If you want to be the best, you got to be obsessive about what you do. I look at the best basketball players, the best football players, the best financial managers, they are obsessive. The best computer programmers, they are obsessive. The best husbands are obsessive. You look at them constantly talking about their wives, constantly talking about what they're going to do for their wives, constantly talking about the dreams of their wives, constantly talking. The best wives are obsessive. See, we're told not to be obsessive about anything. It's a compulsion. But see, if you want to be the greatest, you got to be obsessive, obsessive. Find me a person that's considered upset, uh, uh, at the pinnacle of their career and show me there's no obsession. I've studied every element from athletes to business owners. 
and there's an obsession there has to be a certain level of, level of obsessiveness there has to be a culture that says I'm so committed to it that I will not let go of it I'm going to commit myself to being it I'm going to commit myself to doing it and what you'll find out is that obsessiveness about being the best is pervasive it starts to leak into the lives of others it's infectious I tell people all the time I am I don't want to affect people as much as I want to infect them see when you affect a person you affect them and, and nothing's wrong with that if you touch their lives and you bring something good and you you have a positive effect that's great but when you infect somebody you pass on something that's contagious so when you infect somebody you don't just touch their lives you touch the lives of the people they touch you have become infectious. Infect them with your faith. Infect them with your joy. Infect them with your 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 your, your spirit of relentlessness. Re infect them with a faith that says, "I will not give up. I will not let go. I will not turn around. No surrender. No retreat." Infect people with hope. Infect them with 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 an expectation of something better and watch the world around you change that's what you should be about that's how you reach the pinnacle that's how you have a mindset of a winner it's not built overnight it's a constant journey you don't finish the journey till you take your last breath I'm gonna check out of here look I absolutely love doing what I do it's not easy. I mean, this past year has been anything but what I wanted it to be, with the exception of having the joy of being married to the most beautiful woman in the world and the responsibility of rearing the most joyous children of the world. And that doesn't mean that <laughs> that don't come with a lot of challenges. It just means it's my fulfillment. I love it. But I'm talking about the things in business and finance and everything and how it's just been a push and a challenge. I mean, it seems like it's going, then it's bam, it's bam. Then I had five heart attacks at, in March. But people will tell you that I had those five heart attacks right after I launched that 30-day challenge. And I fulfilled it. I came back from those heart attacks and I fulfilled every last one of those contracts. It's just... You got to have a fight in you. And the why has to be bigger than you. When you know your why and your why is bigger than anything you're ever going to face, there's nothing that will come along that will make you quit. Because your why says it's bigger. Your why is connected to the creator. And when your why is connected to the creator, you have an obligation to the creator to live life at the level you were designed to live it at. Anything less than that is letting down the creator. You weren't designed to be mediocre. You weren't designed to be average. You were designed to express yourself in a manner that the world knows you're here. To make your presence felt. I'm challenging you today. Close out this year on a note of positivity and power. It doesn't mean everything that you desire is going to come to you before the year is up. It means that you will come to a knowledge of self so powerful that no matter what you face, you know nothing can stop you from being what you were designed to be and to rising to the pinnacle of your greatness and time. That's the thing. It's the journey that you should really truly learn to, to embrace. It's the journey. It's progress. That's not a day I don't celebrate myself. That's why I don't get off on likes and shares and all the other stuff that people on social. Why? Because I don't need the approbation of anyone else. Me and my creator, we rocking. I'm showing up every day to do things that I was designed to do. And sometimes I'm doing it in some of the most stressful and arduous situations and, and, and predicaments. But I'm showing up because as long as I've got breath in my body, I'm still in the fight. And if I'm still in the fight, there's still the possibility of me winning. All I need is possible. All I need is possible. When you know it's possible, that's something that shifts. That's a switch that comes on. I'm telling you, 
that there's something on the inside of you that God wants to come out. I'm not telling you who, you're, how, who you see God as, how you see God, but I'm telling you, if you don't have a connection to something bigger than yourself, life is going to be awful hard for you. But when you know you were created by something greater, and that that, that that creation and that design has purpose, I tell people all the time, when you discover your purpose, it will explain your pain. I'm telling you. You walk a little different. You got a little bit more movement. You got a little more swag. Why? Because I'm built for this. I've been through some things. I, I grew up with some challenges, but I'm built for it. I went through some things in my early adulthood, but I'm built for this. I made some poor choices, but I was built to overcome them. I, I, I'm trying to get you to understand that this isn't about a life of ease. It's about a life of commitment. Make your presence felt in the world. On that note, I'm going to get ready to get off of here. Uh, got some things I got to get done, but I just want to come with you and share with that. Don't forget, if you've never done the 30 day challenge, definitely sign up. Uh, the link is there. I didn't add anything but that information because I wanted people to see it and just go straight to it. This is a chance to close this year out strong. It's a chance to see what it's like to work with me. And I really, really, really just am looking forward to working with as many people as possible. I was blessed. I, like I said, I had to fulfill the contracts of that first 30-day challenge uh, that I did at the beginning of the year, right after having a heart attack. And it was the most inspiration and empowering thing. It gave me purpose. And, you know, with me, people ask me all the time, man, what makes you get going? The beautiful thing about my life is I never have to wake up with the question of why I do what I do. When I wake up, I have a wife laying there. And I have kids in the house and out of the house. All I need. Everything else is just added motivation. The clients that I wake up to serve, added motivation. The books that I write, added motivation. All the research that I conduct, added. But waking up and saying, this woman is dependent on me to be the best I can be, and I've got work to do. Waking up and saying, these kids are going to be looking to me to show them how to overcome Difficult. See, anybody can shine when everything is going well. But your kids are going to look at you to see how you perform when all hell is breaking loose. When, when the gamut falls. Show them what you're made of. On that note, I'm going to get ready to get out of here. As I always say, I'm going to live my life on full and I'm going to die on E. I challenge you to do the same thing. Sign up and enroll for that 30 day challenge. I'm out of here. Hello everybody, Dr. Rick Wallace here, dropping in with a little special announcement. For those who have followed me for any stretch of time, you know outside of the businesses that I run, like Myriad Business Solutions, the Visionetics Institute, Odyssey Media Group, I also do a great deal of work inside of the inner city communities. Uh, in Houston, Dallas, and other areas. Uh, I'm asking now as we push a fundraiser that you support what the Odyssey Project is doing in the inner cities, uh, especially with programs like Black Men Lead, which is a rite of passage uh, initiative, and Restoring Ghetto for, Ghetto's Forgotten Daughters, which is a program focused on helping young girls, but boys as well, suffering from childhood sexual abuse, uh, rape, molestation, domestic abuse, uh, absentee fatherhood, and so many other things. Uh, the information will be in the box. Thank you.
Hello everybody, Dr. Rick Wallace here dropping in on you. First of all, I want to thank everyone for all the love and support that you have given uh, and sent my way and my wife's way and the organization's way. Now I want to just take a brief moment to remind you that we still need your support. We still need your help. Go to the description box of one of our videos and see how you can support the work we're doing. Keep supporting, keep loving us, and we're going to keep loving you back. Have an awesome day. From a conceptual standpoint, people talk about it. All of the elements.